Hey guys, Stock Saturday, and people are getting their emails about joining Trading212 again, and they've put the referral code link up again, so I'll put that in the description and in a pinned comment, so you can join up potentially. Uh, portfolio's down this week, uh, about 5,000, bit of a hit, uh, but nothing too bad, about 2%, so it's largely uh, gold and silver, and crypto this week so most of the loss is in here uh pretty much everything is down uh, including the chinese tech as well that's not been uh, having the best week they're still in sort of lockdown although sort of potential uh, quantitative easing money printing starting uh they're sort of saying they will try and build their way out of this with uh infrastructure spending and that sort of thing so maybe not quite that good for alibaba and baidu being sort of more tech focused but uh yeah we'll uh, we'll see that's why i'm going sort of more into the base metal miners but uh yeah silver's been sort of having a a fairly rough week uh gold's not done quite as bad but yeah still sort of down from the uh, the recent highs and crypto is having a particularly rough week uh, with sort of the Nasdaq dropping. Uh, crypto is sort of seemingly fairly correlated to that at the moment. But uh, yeah, not too bad. Uh, so just looking at the trading 212, uh, that's down about 2,000, just over 2,000. Some of that is in the ARK stuff. That's nearly 50% down now. Not investing in that just yet. Um, part of this as well has come in the REITs. So American Tower is sort of bucking the trend and not doing too bad. Um, Argo Blockchain, so it's down 5.8% for the week. Uh, starting to sort of re-looking at my, uh, my model that I did in my Argo blockchain review um, and sort of updating that with more recent prices. Might do a video on that on Monday, we'll see. Um, but yeah, so digital realty, 3.8% down. Not doing too well. First Majestic, as I say, with uh, silver coming down. All the silver stocks are coming down as well. Uh, I am looking to, I've sold some sort of physical uh, silver and platinum that I held with Royal Mint. And I'll probably be sort of looking to put that in, in here. So you probably see the portfolio up uh, by about 3,000 odd uh, next week. So yeah, that isn't gain. That's just me putting new money in and subscribing to this year's ISA. Uh, what else have we got? Realty, 5% or 4.6% down on the week. Um, so interest rates sort of going up in uh, various various countries. Bank of England put their rate up. Uh, Fed put their rate up half a percent. Um, but they have sort of backed away from, uh, or they've said they weren't considering uh, three quarters of a percent next month, as they were talking about. But yeah, they're, uh, I think people are sort of realising why they're not considering it. They don't want to be sort of raising into a recession. So, yeah, stocks aren't doing all that well. REITs sort of aren't doing all that well. Stag down 6.25%. Um, so, yeah, they're Stag and Tritax Big Box. Tritax down 16%. Uh, this appears to be partly down to sort of Amazon and the online retailers sort of obviously having a, a crazy good time of it uh, over the lockdown periods and Amazon have now come out and said they have sort of too much capacity um, so not necessarily cancelling leases but I guess maybe they're not going to be aggressively sort of opening um, all that much in the future. So Tritax just had their uh, their results and they look pretty good. Um, but obviously sentiment from sort of their one of their biggest customers uh, isn't particularly good. So 
yeah, they're down. It's not something I'd be adding to. It doesn't look tremendous value, but certainly wouldn't be selling. Um, and I have made a sale in here. Uh, so I sold Sentiment out completely, even though uh, gold and silver, sort of Sentiment is largely gold, and that's sort of held up reasonably well. Uh, so £2,000, sold that out and put it all into Sylvania. Uh, I mentioned sort of yesterday doing a uh, a video on them. Pretty happy with their results, and they'd sort of dropped quite a bit more than sentiment and just look uh, look better value. So I thought I would move that in there. Uh, so seven, yeah, seven and a half thousand shares now. Brought my sort of average price up a fair bit, but that's all right. And yeah, Tritax, Eurobox down and Vici down a little. So yeah, this uh, this little portfolio hasn't done all that well, but it's partly crypto, partly sort of interest rates. Can't see anything too wrong with that. So the investor account isn't looking too bad this week, about uh, £1,200 up. Uh, did sort of spike up on the Fed. Uh, interest rate news that they wouldn't be doing three quarters of a percent uh, that would sort of seem to be baked in and so everything rose on that and then sort of I think the realization hit of uh, why they're not doing it as I say don't want to be sort of raising into uh, a recession quite that hard but they are still saying three percent by the end of the year so that'll hit things um, but yeah so sort of people were really saying that it's not been good this week there was huge crashes and everything but you look at your your weekly google's up uh 1.4 percent obviously uh, not particularly good on the month but yeah people are saying it's been a horrendous week and it sort of hasn't really uh apple flat for the week um i have made some sales though uh so just sort of i mean a lot of the other uh Stocks are sort of up and down a little, some on sort of interest rate news. But yeah, I thought I would uh, sort of concentrate a little bit more on my buys and sells. So sold out of Airtel Africa. Um, sort of, it was about 60% up and uh, I sort of thought good value when I bought it. Um, and it sort of come right up to uh, sort of forward PE of about 12. Uh, a little bit difficult to sort of get get estimates on it or sort of make a prediction from uh, past results they are growing a little bit but uh yeah sort of telecoms companies wasn't really sort of my uh, my high conviction so when there's sort of better value i believe elsewhere uh this was sort of a a sell i've been thinking about for a little while it's sort of been hovering around this sort of price and yeah so that went and also uh, Sega Sammy. So sort of uh, unusual ones, not where something that many people hold, but uh, I quite like sort of got a soft spot for uh, for some of their games, the sort of Sonic uh, franchise and didn't realize sort of up until I, I bought them that they owned the sort of football manager license and sort of Yakuza and that sort of thing, the Warhammer games. so. Yeah, I thought they were an interesting buy. Uh, this was up sort of 40% or so. They sort of had their... Um, they also own a lot of uh, sort of Japanese. They owned arcades and that sort of thing. They were all shut uh, when I bought them. And uh, yeah, they sort of opened up. Results were looking better. They're also in sort of casinos. Um, and yeah, it was just... When I bought them, it seemed good value, and now they've sort of risen up. They've been doing a lot of buybacks with the uh, with the money that they've got from reopening. Always been sort of fairly fairly cash positive, and yeah, it's sort of now come up to what's looking like about a forward P of twenty, uh, sort of maybe about fifteen to eighteen if you net off some of the sort of excess cash, depending on how much you would want to net off. So, yeah, I mean, sort of 15 to 18, even if you net off the cash, doesn't seem sort of particularly uh, good value, I didn't think. Uh, sort of upcoming games, 
are uh, fairly sparse. They're sort of doing remasters of games and that sort of thing. Just didn't seem all that positive. Uh, nothing that's going to sort of move the needle in the next uh, sort of six months to a year that I could see. So, yeah, decided to sell them off as well and sold off uh, Renault as well. So Renault sort of got hit. Uh, where are we? Yeah, Renault. So obviously they, uh, a lot of people may not know, uh, they're probably the largest uh, car manufacturer exposed to Russia. Uh, do quite a lot of business sort of out that way so yeah they've uh, they've been hit sort of fairly hard couldn't really anticipate that i sort of bought it when i thought it was uh reasonably good value obviously it's sort of yeah way uh, way above there so it's not done uh, all that well and sort of i can't really see them um sort of recovering anytime soon can't see the sort of russia side of things ending so yeah i thought take the loss it's an unfortunate loss but uh we'll take that and i put so i put renault into stellantis uh, that seemed uh, a reasonable buy stellantis just come out with their not um not earnings they only report every sort of half year so that'll be july time but they did release quarter one uh shipments and revenue so they've actually done sort of more in revenue on a lower amount of cars, sort of prioritising uh, the higher value cars with the sort of chip shortage. And uh, yeah, they've seen sort of a little bit of growth in America, which is pretty good. Bit of uh, shrinking back in Europe, uh, I guess due to the chip shortage. That's where they've sort of made their main losses. Uh, but yeah, revenue seems to be up, so we'll wait on uh, see on the sort of first year earnings in July. But I would think sort of last year's uh, big net profit number wasn't uh, wasn't maybe a fluke as some people seem to be thinking it is. So yeah, reasonable reasonable value to me. Looks to be a sort of forward P of about four, three to five, depending on. Sort of what uh, what estimates you would believe, but sort of conservatively say four or five looks good to me because they're in a very good uh, sort of cash balance sheet position compared to sort of my other uh, my other large holding Volkswagen. They obviously have a, a huge amount of debt. Uh, Stellantis sort of don't have that issue, uh, although as I sort of always say, they're a little bit behind on the electric push but uh, yeah i think i would take that for that sort of more healthy balance sheet so and the airtel africa and sega money got split between glencore so they've been having a, a little bit of a drop i didn't quite get the uh, the sort of drop down to the 450s that was unfortunate but uh, i thought with the china uh, infrastructure uh, spending they're looking to spend two trillion dollars over uh, the next little while so that's just going to mean more and more copper and uh, so i thought that was good so glencore should be doing well it's whether their sort of forward estimates are going to uh, to hold up i would expect they're going to drop next year but even if they do have a fairly significant drop it still looks pretty good uh, and I put some into Rio Tinto, sort of similar reasons really. One of my uh, one of my more favoured ones. Steel again should be uh, used quite heavily in the uh, infrastructure spending, and similar with Vale. So I put about a thousand into uh, all three of those. Vale sort of uh, dropped a fair bit this week. Uh, nickel sort of coming down as well as iron ore so that's uh, that's taken a bit of a hit but still looks very good and the other thousand into tsmc so they're now uh, sort of come right back down sort of forward p of 17 16 looks uh, very good value to me their uh, sort of first quarter 
even with the chip shortage, looked very, very good. And they were sort of forecasting strong growth as well. So I think potentially this is just a little bit of uh, sort of fear over the chip shortage, but not really looking into the detail. And sort of potentially China, Taiwan, America sort of issues. That seems to be sort of bubbling a little bit. But uh, yeah, I'll take the gamble that not a lot is going to come of that. I can't see them really wanting to escalate that any further. So yeah, that was uh, that was my sort of main buys for the week. And I really am starting to look at companies like Johnson & Johnson, uh, sort of basically yeah, the same forward PE as TSMC now. And sort of obviously you, you can't see that those two are going to be growing at the same rates. So potentially looking to make that switch may do sort of in the next next week or two. Um, maybe not all of it into TSMC, but just moving that elsewhere sort of on a comparing uh, value basis. So sort of said that I would do this in uh, in sort of various live streams and that sort of thing. That was kind of my strategy. Wait for sort of prices to come down across the board, but expecting sort of... Uh, PEs across the board really to contract and then you sort of sell your your value stocks and move more into growth stocks I did sort of think I would probably do this a little bit further into the crash I still think we've got a fair bit to go but yeah I just think uh, make the uh, make the start now and get a little bit more into value uh, considering it with FedEx to be honest they're sort of up yeah 5.8 percent on the week uh, nothing sort of particularly seemed to uh, to be causing this, but uh, yeah, starting to sort of look a little bit not high. It's sort of forward P of about eleven, I think. So nothing too high, but it's not a huge conviction of mine. So yeah, that's uh, that's not too bad. eBay sort of falling back again, five uh, five point eight percent. Not particularly. Uh, good results for them but yeah the uh, they're still sort of making a lot of profit and doing insane amount of buybacks they sort of bought back about 15 percent of the outstanding shares in the last year so kind of puts a, a floor under them when there's a constant buyer uh, high max down a couple of percent looking good though um yeah so that's sort of largely uh, the moves this week legal in general down a, a fair bit lanar slightly up meta not really moved process down a fair bit with uh, 10 cent coming down most of sort of chinese tech is down so that's not particularly good shell came out with sort of fairly bumper earnings kind of as expected really that's why they've been sort of going up in the last um last sort of few weeks and last few months really in anticipation of good earnings and they were pretty good still uh, sort of wondering on the oil price to be honest i guess i mean the the analysts sort of get a little bit overly optimistic when the oil price goes up and they're sort of uh, projecting huge huge earnings even sort of next year so potentially uh, that could be a little bit false that sort of gives them a, a forward PE of about seven so you would think they're still sort of crazy good value even a buy maybe but uh, starting to wonder if these sort of estimates are based on the uh, the oil price sort of never coming down and the gas price is never coming down which they certainly could do um seeing they're uh, they're spending a little bit of money a little bit of the profits on sort of more renewables companies. They bought uh, I think about one point five billion dollar um, renewables company in India, which is interesting. But they're also spending still on gas and oil uh, exploration and sort of companies. I think they said they spent one billion on a a, a oil field. So still obviously spending money on that, which people would rather they weren't. I guess they can't just completely stop it. Um, yeah, Taylor Wimpy, a couple of percent down. Tesla miraculously sort of held up reasonably well, even though it did have a, a spike high. 
Tyson down a couple of percent and Volkswagen sort of down one percent. So, yeah, interesting sort of slight gain in this portfolio with uh, with a few moves. So, yeah, let me know your, your thoughts if you uh, agree with sort of consolidating. I was at sort of nearly 50, I think about 50 positions before and now we're at sort of 35 so slowly getting rid of the sort of smaller and lower conviction positions and consolidating into my uh, hopefully my better ideas so yeah leave your your thoughts in the comments below and uh, like and subscribe see you soon